.NET 7 is finally here, so now is the time to build a web API with all the CRUD operations, meaning create, read, update, and delete, using the HTTP request methods get, post, put, and delete. And we will start with the Fed controller, but bear with me here. Directly after that, we will make use of the repository pattern, meaning we will create a service, inject the service with dependency injection. And after that, we will also utilize Entity Framework 7 now to store your data persistently in a database. Let's start. All right, real quick here you can see it you can download .NET 7 now and when we go to all .NET 7 downloads here you also see all the options and really important you need Visual Studio 2022 version 17.4 for that it took them couple more hours after the release of uh, the .NET 7 SDK to also release version 17.4 uh, they only had the preview edition when they released .NET 7, but uh, now it is here. And if you want to use Visual Studio Code, it works either way. All right. So just make sure if you want to use Visual Studio 2022, 2022, that you have versions, version 17.4. Jesus, it's late. Sorry about that. So we will use Visual Studio 2022, the community edition here. Got lots and lots of tests already here but let's now create a new project and we want to build an ASP.NET Core Web API. You see the core term, it will never leave, I guess. And also here, not only in the recent project templates, you can also see it here, of course, ASP.NET Core Web API with C Sharp, please. And that's what we're going to do. And we call this, well, I love, I still love superheroes. If you are a subscriber to my channel, you know that. So let's call the superhero API. Now with .NET 7, we hit next and there it is .NET 7 standard term support, meaning the support for .NET 7 is only 18 months. For .NET 6, it is uh, three years. So the support will run out for .NET 7 before it runs out for .NET 6, but I guess until it's that late, we will already have .NET 8. So now I think it's it's okay to use .NET 7 and it, it gets uh, lots and lots of great new features, not only regarding uh, the web API and EF7, also Blazor, but more about that in later videos. So now authentication type, won't use anything here. Configure for HTTPS is great. We use controllers, the old school way to build APIs not the minimal API and we enable open API support so that we get a cute swagger page where we can test our API, but more about that throughout this tutorial. So let's create this now. And this thing already exists. So let's go back real quick and let's just add um, API.NET 7 here. All right, great name. Now let's create this thing and in a couple of seconds, we should see this. And I will start explaining some stuff for the absolute beginner or for the beginner of web APIs with .NET here. You see the project now, or the solution with the new project here. We've got a bunch of folders, properties, and the controllers folder, app settings, the program CS file, and the weather forecast model. So let's go through that really, really quick. Regarding the launch settings, what we see here is actually when we run the application, it will be available under a certain application URL, as you can see here and here. So for instance, let's just do this real quick. We start without debugging. If you use this button, we would uh, you we would be able to use debugging. But with this button here, it's it's a bit faster. I like it that way because I not want I don't want to use debugging all the time when I am uh, starting my apps. And here we are, this is already swagger. And we can already see interesting stuff here. Actually, we see the schemas or you could also say, these are the models. So the weather forecast model using the date only type here not new with .NET 7, but still kind of new. And uh, here you can also see these types day of the week, this is an enum, and also the day date only where the day of the week is used. And again, the weather forecast then uses the date only. So this is already 
quite neat, I guess, when you use Swagger that you see the, the models that are used here in this API. And now the default example is the typical weather forecast. It is a get method, meaning we just well, grab data from the web API here. We can try this out, we can execute this, and then we get randomly generated weather forecasts. Isn't that nice? And when we now have a look at the code, or oh, wait a sec, you see the URL. This is what I also wanted to, to tell you. 7256 is the port for the HTTPS, um, well, version, let's say, or application. And here you can see this as well, 7256, and the launch URL is Swagger, so that's that then, and in this case, we get access to this, uh, well, to this page here, meaning Swagger with the API documentation. All right, that's that, and now again, in the Weather Forecast Controller, we, let me just close the Solution Explorer for a sec, we see this method here already. Again, this is for the beginner. You can see the time codes down in the video description and the chapters below the video. So if you already know that, please feel free to skip the chapters. So this is the HTTP GET method. We already see this attribute here, HTTP GET. The name is not that important here. Really, or just important is the HTTP GET. This attribute, well, says it here, identifies an action that supports the HTTP GET method. And in here now we see the return type I enumerable with the weather forecast model. We can go there, of course, as well. And here again, we see the date only type, the temperature in Celsius, Fahrenheit, and the summary, which is another blue string. And here again, you see that it simply returns randomly generated temperatures and uh, summaries and the summaries come from, yeah, come from here. Could be freezing, bracing, chilly, and so on. So this is everything that's going on here. We already see a little bit of dependency injection, meaning the iLogger is injected here, but maybe for the beginning, this is a bit too much. We will build our own web API uh, where we also use the uh, different HTTP request methods, get, post, put, and delete. We will also use um, uh, dependency injection then when we use the repository pattern and also later when we use the entity framework. And we will of course also build the default controller, let's say that is inheriting from controller base. And what's that? As you can see here, a base class for an MVC model view controller controller without view support. If you would need view support, we could use this class actually, but controller base is just fine for us. This is not an MVC application. This is just the web API. And this stuff is really great because I'm trying to access this class. Now it should work control and left mouse button to get there. You get lots and lots of stuff with that class. For example, the HTTP context, the HTTP request, the response, and a later also interesting uh, when we find it here, the claims principle, there it is, line 216. So this is, for instance, uh, important or useful when you're using authorization and authentication. With that, then the, you get the user object that is in the HTTP context, as you can see here as well. And also, you get lots and lots of uh, different result options, object results with a status code. For instance, let me just search for that again. Yeah, there it is already. We can return an okay result. This is what we already got from the weather forecast controller here, meaning the status code 200 is returned as you can see here. And this just means that everything went fine, but we also get, don't know if they wrote it here. Yeah, for instance, the status 404 not found. Everybody knows that, even the people that don't write any code. So for that, you could return the not found function here. All right or you could use this function to return a 404 status code. So lots and lots of stuff. You can also have a bad request, forbidden, and so on, and so on, like unauthorized, I wanted to say unauthorized here. So this is the controller base class. I think this is 
enough about that. So let's go back to the weather forecast controller. And the last thing I want to already tell you here are these two attributes. Let's have a quick look. The API controller, as it says, it, as it says here, indicates that a type and all derived types are used to serve HTTP API responses. So, well, we need that we want to use this stuff and this is why we need this controller here as well uh, this attribute here and the route specifies an attribute route on a controller now this is how you well define this endpoint in essence and how you get to this thing and in these brackets here meaning the term controller in the brackets is a convention which means you can access this thing by typing in weather forecast so the term that comes before the controller term. And when we go back to Swagger, you can also see it here. We executed this. And as you can see here, the curl statement statement says it, or also the request URL says it. You've got our HTTPS, localhost, and so on. And then only weather forecast, all right? And also important, we use the get HTTP request method. So this combination, this URL with the get request method, leads to this certain endpoint here. And with that, we get a bunch of randomly generated weather forecasts. All right, I hope this makes things a bit clearer already. We um, can also have a look at the program CS. This is the only thing that maybe is also interesting. The app settings is really not interesting for now. Here, since .NET 6, we we only have the program CS file. Earlier, we also got a startup CS file where we got a configure method and the configure services method, but that's not the case anymore. You see, this is really, really small. And this, well, I think this is because of the new minimal APIs, right? Microsoft wanted, or the .NET team wanted to, well, make it more usable, make .NET more usable, more um, approachable, let's say, and easier for the developers. Well, when you use minimal APIs, this is just a side note, it looks a bit more like Node.js if you have some experience with that. So maybe if you feel at home with Node, then uh, this is definitely something you want to have a look into it. You want to have a look into I got some videos about that on my channel. So maybe you can check out the info cards or just, well, maybe you want to subscribe and then <laughs> see all the other videos. But here then the, the whole magic happens. Um, we create the builder here, we add the controller services, we add the endpoints API Explorer, configures API Explorer using endpoint metadata and so on. Didn't want to get um, into more details here. We've got some uh, middleware like use authorization, use HTTPS redirection, meaning we redirect HTTP requests to HTTPS and so on. And in the end, we run the application. One tiny little thing here, add Swagger Gen. This is the, um, well, the Swagger stuff. And you also see it here in the tooltip that the swashbuckle ASP.NET Core Swagger or just the swashbuckle package here is used, swashbuckle ASP.NET Core. Funny little name, but when you have a look at the project file here, you can see this is the package that is used here. All right, so here now we will then configure our, or register our services when we use the repository pattern together with entity framework, with the data context that we then need with entity framework. All right, now, Let's take a deep breath. I think this is enough for the beginning here. Now let's build our own web API. And for that, let's just close everything here. And we go to the solution explorer and we will create only one model and this will be the superhero. Maybe let's create a folder for that and call this models. And in here now we create a new class, so add class, and we call this super hero. All right, there it is. And in here now, we just add some properties with prop and then tap twice. We can add this property here. First thing I want to add is the ID. The next thing is a string, which is the name of the hero. 
And you see this little warning here, non-nullable property name must contain non-null value and so on. So uh, I would say by default, this is simply an empty string or we could also uh, make this simply a nullable string. And now let's also copy this. And additionally to the name, I wanna add the first name, the last name, and then also a place that this would be the first name the last name, and then also a place. All right, so this will be our superhero class. And now we can already build a controller. So right click add, and now we choose controller, not a class, not a new item, we can already go to controller here. And then we get again some options. It's not an MVC controller, it's an API controller. And here we also see some options an empty controller, an API controller with actions using entity framework, read write endpoints using entity framework, creates CRUD endpoints given a model class and database context using entity framework. So you can already, and you see it here, minimal API scaffolder, you can uh, already create controllers with a generated code. But for me, not only it's not only the best way to learn, in my opinion, to use the empty one. Even later, I tend to use the empty ones because I want to write the code a bit differently, maybe. But still, this is totally up to you. I guess for this tutorial, for this little course here, it makes sense to choose an empty API controller, all right? And then we will add the CRUD operations one by one. So let's add this thing and we call this now super hero controller, simple as that. And as you can see here, this empty controller now also has the controller base class inherited. We got the API controller attribute and also the route attribute here. They added by default the API string here. So API forward slash and then controller. When we have a look at the weather forecast controller again, you see that the API string is missing. It's totally up to you how you want to use it. I like it that way, actually. So this is absolutely okay. All right, so now let's create our first method already. And this would be an HTTP GET call. So HTTP GET is suggested by IntelliCode and this is totally right. And now we say public async task. We return now an I action result, all right? As you can see here, defines a contract that represents the result of an action method, meaning with that we want to return status codes. Okay, not found, whatever it is. And we can call this get all heroes, for instance. All right, so we return a complete list of uh, heroes. And in here now, let's just create um, a list of superheroes. So var superheroes is a new list of a super hero. And in here now, we just use the object initializer to create a new superhero. And yeah, ID one is great. Then the name, my favorite one is called super. He's actually called Spider-Man. And do you know the correct name? The first name is Peter. Then the last name would be Parker then. And the place this guy lives as far as I know in New York City. And now I'm curious, does formatting work? I did not work with uh, version 17.4 of Visual Studio. You can double check, help about Microsoft Visual Studio 17.4.0 and the formatting does not work here. So we do this manually again and again and again. This is our superhero now. And what we do is simply return, in this case then not, Jesus, not the superheroes, we return Okay, and then superheroes. And with that, as you can see here, 
creates an OK object result that produces in status code status 200 OK response. So, so this is really what we want to do here. All right. One more thing about the attribute here. When you want to use swagger, you need this attribute. If we would not use it or add it here, it would still work, but swagger would not work. All right. So if you want to use swagger here, then you have to specify the attribute. There is a convention in a web API. So every function that starts with get, for instance, then um, assumes that this is actually a get method. So if you want to use swagger, please add the attribute. Otherwise, it would not work. Now, the little warning here just states, as you can see, these async method lacks await operators. I know that, but we will add await um, or asynchronous calls later when we add entity framework. So bear with me here, please. For now, let's just run this. And as you can see in a second, when uh, swagger opens, yeah, there it is. Fetch error fail to load API definition. And now let's just add the attribute again. And well, this was really, really quick. Hot reload at its best, really. Enable browser link, enable CSS, hot reload. And here, hot reload on file safe. Make sure that this is activated. Hot reload on file safe. Because with that, then the application will reload in, uh, in the bag. So, now we've got our superhero call here, right? But what you can see in the schemas or in the models, there is no superhero type. So why is that? And also here we, we see no suggestion. Here we, we actually see something is going on. We, we, what we expect here, an example value. Well, that's because of the I action result. We can change that, of course, not using the interface. We can actually define the type that we expect here. And in our case, that would be a list of superheroes. So one more angle bracket, save this again, and uh, maybe save this again, and it doesn't work. So maybe we have to restart the application. And now it works. All right, so still sometimes a little bit buggy, but uh, as you can see, from time to time, just restart your application and maybe the errors are gone. And now we see our superhero type here with the ID, the name, and so on. And now here we also see a suggested example value or example value, not a suggested value, an example value. And now we can just try this thing out. We can hit execute and we get Spider-Man. Isn't that nice? So that's it already. This is our first get call. And now let's just move on with the other CRUD operations. Maybe the first one here is, uh, well, it's maybe the fifth CRUD operation where we just want to get a single superhero. So maybe we can move this up here and make this a private static list of superheroes. All right. And now here we just return our super. This is everything that we need actually. All right. And now let's copy this and return a single hero. So get single hero maybe. And for that, we need an ID, right? So let's add the parameter ID. And where do we get this ID from? Well, we can change the route that of the endpoint actually. So again, we can use the route attribute here. And that will look like that. We add the brackets here, route, and then in parentheses, we define our route. And since we only want to use a parameter here, we add curly braces and write ID. So this thing then has to match with this parameter here. But we can combine the HTTP method with the route attribute. So let's just copy whatever it is in the parenthesis and remove this attribute. And this works as well. All right. And now here, let's just say we want to have a specific hero of the superheroes 
and uh, let's just say find where the ID of the superhero equals the given ID. And in the end, we return a hero here. All right. So let's just add a second one with ID two, we call this guy now Iron Man. And this would be then Tony Stark. And as far as I know, this guy lives in Malibu. Correct me if I'm wrong. And again, let's just try that. Just saved everything. We already have our second get method here. You see the ID here as a parameter. So let's try this out. We choose one, hit execute. And it says object reference not set to an instance of an object. This is interesting. Maybe we can just reset our app again. Try this one more time. And now we get Spider-Man. All right, so just ignore this little error here. Let's try it with two. We hit execute. There's Iron Man. What about three now? 204 undocumented. Okay, this is a bit strange. Maybe we can change that. So maybe now we can actually make use of the not found, the 404 status code. So maybe here we can check if hero is null, then return not found. And we add a little message like, sorry, but this hero doesn't exist. All right, let's save that. And maybe we don't have to restart our app now. We hit three. Sorry, but this hero doesn't exist. And we get a 404 back. And by the way, if you want to use the console here with the developer tools, you can do that as well. Of course, let's filter for fetch XHR, which stands for XML HTTP requests. And uh, let's just execute this one more time. And here you actually see the same result, right? This is the request URL, HTTPS and so on API superhero three. It's a get method. Status code is 404. And in the preview, we see this message here, right? And let's just try it again with Spider Man execute. We see this call here to get method status code is 200. And the preview then is exactly the same stuff we see here in Swagger. Isn't that nice? All right, so get all heroes works, get a single hero works. And now I would say let's add a hero. So again, we can just copy this. And here now this will be HTTP post for adding a hero. Let's call this add hero maybe. And now we need a type here and this would then be the superhero type with an actual hero. We do not have to search a hero this time. We just say superheroes, almost superheroes add hero. That's exactly correct. And in here now we return our superheroes. All right, that's already it. So just make sure to use the HTTP post request method. And in here now, we use this type. If you want to be absolutely sure you can use this attribute here from body specifies that a parameter or property should be bound using the request body. So in that case, you make sure you are expecting this object here in the body. But since this is a complex type, it will be expected in the body anyways. And we will of course send it through the body. We will not add a, a parameter here in the URL actually, like it's done here. You can do this in the put method when you wanna update a hero, but we'll get to that in a second. So now let's just add one with HTTP post and this add hero method. And yeah, we also return a list of superheroes. And with that, I actually see that this is totally wrong. We are not returning a list of uh, superheroes. You see it still worked. So this is nice. You see it doesn't really have to, uh, to be correct the type you can still return whatever you want to. But uh, 
I think it's it's better to see it or to, well, just do it correctly because then Swagger will also uh, expect this uh, the the correct type here. As you can see, we still see the list uh, here with the bracket. But now when we save this, this should be gone, and maybe we have to restart the app again. And now we should only see this thing here. Again, double check, a list. Oh my gosh, restart the application. Again, the single one, now it expects a list. All right, so this is what I actually wanted to show you and I'm glad it worked. Although we have to restart the app manually a couple of times. Okay, now let's add a superhero. Maybe we can just uh, get one first, so we don't have to type everything. Although Swagger is helping us, so let's just open this. For the update, it makes sense to just copy and paste the uh, the complete object. But here now, as you can see, this is our request body. We add ID three. We say this is Bruce. Uh, Bruce Wayne, yeah, Bruce Wayne. Let's start with the first name. Bruce Wayne lives in Gotham City. And who is it? Of course, this is Batcam. <laughs> Batman, it's late. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so. Uh, ID3, name is Batman, Bruce Wayne, Gotham City, we hit execute, and now we get three superheroes. Isn't that nice? So this is the update, this already works. Again, the request URL, the type is now post, and uh, well, again, we get them back. So this worked just fine. Sad thing now is, it's really unfortunate when we now restart the the web API, we will lose Batman, and this is why we need Entity Framework later on. But uh, as you can see here now, when we get all the heroes, we got Batman as well. And again, if we restart this thing now, and again try this out, we only get Spider-Man and Iron Man back because of this list here, right? Okay, so this is the post method. Now let me copy this get method here again. No, let's, oh uh, yeah, let's let's just use this thing. You see, I really don't have a script or anything. .NET 7 and Visual Studio 2022 version 17.4 has just been released, have just been released. So um, yeah. I just want to create this video as fast as possible. So you see the current version of .NET and Visual Studio 2022. So now let's use the put method to update a hero. And I already told you, you can use this with, an, uh, with a parameter here, or you just say you want to use this object and grab the ID from this object then. So again, let me just uh, copy this here. We return a list of superheroes. We call this update hero. And in here now we get a superhero for instance. But if you want to use the parameter, we can do this as well. Then we would need the ID here as well. So we've got HTTP put. Again, you could, you could just remove this and this. I hope this this is clear then. And then we will use not uh, this ID, we would then actually use hero ID. And maybe you can call this request and it makes more sense. So request and then a request ID. So we just grab the ID from the given hero from the client. Or again, we just use the URL like that. All right. So with that, we also get a hero. And again, let's just call this request. So uh, we do not get into trouble here with this variable. So let's do like that, for instance. And um, we want to find the specific hero. If we do not find it, that's really sad. But otherwise, we just manually update the properties, right? So now we can say hero um, yeah, first name is request first name, hero 
last name is the request last name and the hero name is this and then we get also the place where is it there it is all right and in the end we well we could return only the one hero but i already changed the type so the return type so again we return all our superheroes so let's try this edit where is the problem i don't see a problem here let's just save everything again and restart the application we've got build or errors uh, okay show me the build errors where is it oh that's nice process cannot access the file because it's used by another okay so let's just stop this and try it one more time okay hope this works now there's our put method so now again we get all our heroes this is nice this is spider-man and when i now try to change this we can try this out we now have to add the id here because we're grabbing this id right and now i can change the parameters here don't need the id in this case if you would choose it the other way then of course you need it and let me just say this is now amazing spider-man and let's just leave it let's just leave it as at that and we execute this thing and you see we now get amazing spider-man and here when we get all our heroes this is also the case right so this already worked and of course just here a side note when uh, let me let me just refresh the page and then we say we want to for instance update tony stark right and this guy now is uh, now called string and we only want to change the name of this guy well the problem is our method here will update every single property except the id of this superhero then right so if we would just leave it as that then as you can see here the first name the last name and the place would also be string so we executed this oh my gosh iron man is actually gone he's now called string first name last name is also string and he lives in string that's pretty unfortunate right so you really have to pay attention when you're designing your api and maybe also your client do you want to update a single property and in that case you would have to change the methods maybe or um, you, you you say you build a client that is first grabbing the current uh, object the current state of the object and with all the properties you well you have stored in the database for instance and then even if you only change one thing you still have all the other properties correctly right so you kind of overwrite them but the value is still the same i hope you get what i mean so just pay attention here when you make an update you can well you can do lots of stuff that is maybe not really intended by you or by whoever designed the api or the application really right okay so that's that update works and the last method that you need is the delete method so let's copy this again and now we use http delete again we need the parameter here call this delete hero and then we remove the the hero parameter we use the id again this can still be the same and the only thing that we want to do here is now superheroes remove hero and telecode is awesome so now jesus again all right let's edit this what's wrong here task action result list superhero i think everything is okay let me just stop the app again it kind of feels like this version of visual studio was a bit rushed maybe because i saw in the chat of the, of the .NET conf that 
some people were asking where is the latest version of Visual Studio because you can only use .NET 7 with the latest version of .NET 7 except you're using the preview edition so maybe it's still a bit buggy here's our delete you try this out and let's remove Iron Man with ID 2 hit execute and Spider-Man is the only one that's left and double check here execute that's true all right, and this is, or are these are all the CRUD operations here. But now I promised you that we not only want to use FAT controllers. And what actually are FAT controllers? Well, it's exactly that what we're building here, meaning that all the logic is in there in the controller. And this is really not the best design. What you can do here now is make use of dependency injection and the repository pattern, meaning that you create so-called services, repositories, and these repositories then will be injected here by the controller in the constructor. And uh, yeah, then it looks a bit better because the controller then only forwards the the request to the actual service. And thanks to dependency injection, we can change the service real quick. But let's just build this stuff. And by the way, we will go way deeper into all that in the .NET 7 Jumpstart course. So maybe you want to have a look in the video description and learn a bit more stuff. So with that little commercial out of the way, let's create the service folder now and maybe stop the application from running. So right click and here now we add a new folder and call this services. And let's also create another folder in here called superhero service. All right. And in here now we add a new item and this would be an interface. And this is then the I superhero service. And Additionally, we add a new class and this is the superhero service. All right. And this thing inherits or implements the I superhero service. Okay. One more important thing here is we have to register this stuff, but maybe we can try this out first and then you will see why we have to register this. So now first the interface, what do we actually need? It's pretty similar to the stuff we already did here. We need functions like the get all, he get all heroes, get single hero and so on. So let me just copy this and paste it here. And maybe we can do this. Um, we can implement all methods at once. And uh, then um, then let's just have a look how this changes then in, in Swagger and in the controller and so on. Now, the first thing here, as you can see, well, where's the superhero? We are here in .NET 7, right? And since .NET 6, we've got, or let's say we are here in C Sharp 11 now. And since C Sharp 10, we've got the global namespace. So back to the controller, you can see that it's using the model's namespace and let me just remove this here and maybe we can go to the program CS and here at our first using and, uh, and now let's just add a global here as well and with that now the controller knows yeah let's stop everything please the controller knows the type and also our interface. Okay, now I I get what I did here. Uh, no, no, it's correct. All right, so in the interface we define our methods, right? So we've got the get all heroes, then we have the get single hero, only returning one superhero, then we get add hero, returning a list again of superheroes. All right. And then 
the updates again returning a list let's just remove the angle brackets here all right and then the last one is the delete method copy this paste it here that was control b maybe this happens to you also sometimes and return the angle brackets. All right, so now we've got our interface. I thought the application was already stopped. All right, so get all heroes, get single hero, add hero update and delete. And now in here, we just use the quick fix menu with control period and say implement interface. And now we've got all our methods, great. And again, it's some copy and paste action here. We just, well, first we uh, move these zeros here to the actual uh, service. All right. And now we've got, got lots and lots of errors here, of course. Let's grab this code from the delete hero method paste it here. Now here, we return all superheroes. All right. And in here now, this is tricky, because we cannot really return a status code here. What we want to return is a list of superheroes. So the only thing that we can actually return is well, maybe now or an empty list. But let's just return null here and create some, well, custom convention here. And then in the controller, we check if the result is null, then we return a not found maybe or a bad request, something like that. All right. Another option for that, and this is again, something we do in the jumpstart courses, that you create a wrapper object, a, a service response that grabs the data together with a message, maybe also a Boolean value that says that the request was successful or not. I don't know, maybe even a status code, something like that. So a wrapper object where you where you then set the, the superhero list with some more information. And with that, then you wouldn't have a statement like this thing here, return null, and then you check for null. You would have a Boolean value, for instance, or your own status code, something like that. And then the controller could work with that and return the proper type, right? Uh, the proper status code. So this is something to think, to, something to think about maybe, but for this little course here, and we're already 50 minutes in, maybe we can do it uh, like that. So what you now want to do is we have to inject the superhero service. For that, we need a constructor. Again, we can use a built-in snippet here, similar to prop, we use CTOR, hit tab twice. And now in here, we say, give me the I superhero service. We call this superhero service. And now here, we create and assign the field superhero service. What I like to do is add an underscore here, and you can actually configure this in Visual Studio. But let's just do it like that now so that there's uh, by default, Visual Studio would add the underscore here, but this is totally fine. And now we can access the superhero service together with the methods, right? And now down here, geez, all the red lines here. Now we say var result is superhero service, delete hero with the ID, that's correct. And in the end, we can return the result. But let's say if result is null, again, we return not found. And again, something like hero not found. All right. So again, this is our convention. And Jesus Christ, I am clicking now. I don't want this application to run, but somehow it is still running. I don't know why. And this is definitely a bug of this latest version of Visual Studio 2022. Not nice, really not nice. But anyways, this is now the delete method. We, as you can see here, we access the superhero service. 
and delete the hero we use the delete hero method right so again let's just implement all the other methods as well oh my gosh okay so here again we copy this for the update and where is it oh i use it in the update hero nice okay did not see that why didn't you tell me and here is the delete that's the one and regarding the update again we can actually return null and then update the properties what's that yeah that's true okay for this tutorial i think that's all right and in the end we return the superheroes okay we can actually do it like that same here all right and now in the controller we copy this again paste it here and now we are calling update hero with the request and that should be it all right so you see we're really just forwarding the request and the actual logic then is in here and of course we also have to change that in the interface so let's say that should be i hope yeah okay visual studio is getting this now i'm really confused sometimes if I did something i don't know if i did something wrong but what is probably the case most of the time or uh, visual studio is, is not getting anything here and i am i'm afraid to hit save because then it will tell me yeah there are build errors of course and the app is still running all right so we've got the update covered we've got the delete covered and now maybe we can move on to the add hero let me just copy this again and here now we are at the add hero superheroes add hero return superhero so this is actually quite simple and again we copy this paste it here add hero this is now called hero we do not have a null check. We just return the result. All right. This is still the asynchronous warning. Now the next one is actually get all heroes, for instance, or get single. Here we are at get single hero. And here as well again we simply return null all right and return in this case the hero let's make this nullable here as well okay and now in the controller we copy this we should really refactor this get a single hero with a given id all right that's that and now all heroes and then we are done so superhero controller simply returns all superheroes so here return super heroes all right and here now you can actually say Oh my gosh. Return superhero service get all heroes. Save this. Restart the application. Problem is, I don't know if this worked. So, you know what? Let me just restart Visual Studio. And with that, I hope we can be sure that we've got our new version here with the service. So, let's close this.
All right, and now let's run this again. That looks better. All right, so now let's see. We want to get all the superheroes. We try it out, we hit execute, and we get an error. And this is what I wanted. Unable to resolve service for type I superhero service. All right, while, well, attempting to activate the superhero controller. And this is why you have to register this stuff. So back to the program CS now. And in here now we say, builder services at scoped i superhero service superhero service and now as it says here adds a scoped service of the type specified in iSuperhero service with an implementation type specified in Superhero service to the specified iService collection. So we register the service here. Also got um, at singleton, it's a singleton service and transient, but most of the time a scoped one makes sense. So add scoped and this really means whenever a controller, a service, whatever it is, wants to inject the I superhero service, the web API knows that it should use the superhero service implementation. Great thing about that is if you, for whatever reason, want to implement a superhero service two or three or four or whatever it is, you want to play around with all that stuff here and you do not want to change this code. So you, you really don't want to touch it. And in this case, you can just create another file, superhero service two, for instance, that is also implementing the interface. Then the only change you have to do is in here. You can then say, I want to use superhero service two in this case instead of the first one and you do not have to touch the controller because it is injecting this interface it is it's using this interface isn't that nice so this is the magic of dependency injection so let's save this let's restart this manually i mean i had the same problems one year ago and i am well i'm a bit confused that they're still here they got even worse actually with the latest update. So I hope they're they're fixing Visual Studio in the next days. If you have similar experience, please let me know in the comments. So now try this out, hit execute, and here are our, our heroes. We can get a single one. Execute, perfect. We can of course add one with ID zero maybe. There it is, and we can change one with ID zero. This is now the name string one, execute works. And let's remove this one again, ID zero, execute, gone. And up here, it is also gone, perfect. So now, this looks better. We have the controller that is only forwarding the request. Okay, we've got this little logic here, bear with me. But then we already use the magical repository pattern with dependency injection with our I superhero service and the superhero service here. Isn't that nice? All right, and now the next step is to finally add entity framework with SQL server to store this stuff persistently. So when you restart your web API, the data is still here. And actually, again, we're using the repository pattern and the unit of work uh, pattern uh, with entity framework. So now you already know how to inject a service and we will also inject this uh, data context now that we are going to build next with uh, the use of entity framework. But before we can actually use entity framework, we have to add some packages and also add the .NET entity framework framework tools. So the very first thing, again, the .NET entity framework tool. So in here, what you have to add, maybe you already have it. In my case, of course, it's already installed. So with .NET EF, I can see I've got the entity framework core.NET command line tools version 7.0.0 installed. 
the current.NET version here is 7.0.100. All right, so now to, to, to get the, the tools here, you have to write the following line, .NET tool install dash dash global and then .NET dash EF. In my case, it's telling me it's already installed, but what I can do is I can either choose update like that, reinstalled, or I can actually uninstall it and then install it again. And with .NET EF, I can double check. Yep, now it's, it's installed. Great. The next step now is NuGet packages. So right click the project file, manage NuGet packages, and then we go to browse. Make sure to choose the browse tab. I do this mistake all the time, I search for something on the install tab and I do not find it. And I'm asking myself, why the heck do I not find it? So in here now, we can actually add Entity Framework and there it is, Microsoft Entity Framework Core and Jesus, 500 million downloads, that's a lot. We see version 7.0.0. So let's install this thing, please. Yep, we accept everything. Next would be, maybe it's already here, yeah, design. Also necessary for the code first migration that we're going to use here. Share to design time components for Entity Framework Core tools. So install this. And since we want to use SQL Server, we also look for SQL Server. There it is, also version 7. Install this thing. And we are done with the packages and the tools. And by the way, if you do not have SQL Server yet, we are using the free Express, 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 Express version, so SQL Server Express is the correct name. I just Googled for it in another window here. There it is. So you can Google for SQL Server Express and then just click here, SQL Server Express. And here you get the Express version. It's a free edition of SQL Server. So you can download it here, I already got it. And uh, additionally, what you can also use is the SQL Server Management Studio there it is. And this is really a great tool that you can download it to have a look at your database, change it, modify data, add some lines and so on. But you will see all that in a minute. So if you do not have SQL Server Express yet, please download it. And maybe you also want to download the Management Studio. You can also watch your database with Visual Studio but I really like the management studio. All right, okay, so please do that and then come back to this video. All right, and with that, we can add our data context. So what I usually do, I create a new folder, new folder, call this data. And in here now, we add a new class and we call this class data context, all right? And this thing now, is using the DB context and we need for that, we need the Microsoft Entity Framework Core namespace. And let's just use the global keyword here as well. If you wanna be more organized, move this to the program CS, but this works as well. All right, and here now, let's just read this together. The DB context, what is this? A DB context instance represents a session with the database and can be used to query and save instances of your entities. DB context is a combination of the unit of work and repository patterns. EF core does not support multiple parallel operations and so on. But the most important thing here is it can be used to query and save instances of your entities and you can use link to do that, right? So you just inject the data context then and with the help of this context, you can access your data, modify it, remove it, and so on. And this is freaking amazing. So let's use it. 
But first we have to write some code. So the first thing here is the constructor. So CTOR again, and now the data context gets a parameter, which is DB context options of the data context, call this options, and we have to run the base constructor here as well. And another thing we need is a connection string. So we can do this in different ways. We can use the application, uh, the app settings file here to add the connection string and then register this thing in the program CS. Again, this is a way we do it in uh, the uh, .NET Jumpstart course, but maybe here we can add another way that is also totally fine. And that would be the on configuring method. So override and then on configuring, that's the one. We've got the options builder here. And with that, we can say options builder use SQL server. So with that now, EFCore knows that we wanna use the SQL server or entity framework seven. It is called entity framework seven. Now the core term is used internally, of course, but the, uh, well, Microsoft or the .NET team divorced the old entity framework actually, and now, the new dot or the new entity framework seven is actually the well the latest entity framework core version. That's just a side note. And now here regarding this connection string, this can get a bit complicated. For you, it might be different, but if you have the same situation as me, meaning SQL Server X SQL Server Express is installed locally on your machine, then you need the following. So server would then be period backslash backslash SQL express, then the database, this is up to you. So the database name would be something like super, or let's call yeah, let's call this super hero, no, superhero DB like that. That's great. Then trusted, come on, connection is true. And now comes something new with .NET 7 or Entity Framework 7, we also have to enter trust server certificate and set this to true as well. All right. So here's the complete thing. Server is SQL Express. The database is the superhero DB trusted connection set to true. And then also trust server certificate also true. All right. And with that out of the way, we at the database set. In our case, this would be the superheroes table. So we can add another property here. DB set, a DB set can be used to query and save instances of T entity link queries against a DB set will be translated into queries against the database. Meaning when we've got our superheroes database set here, we can use the link to make entity framework create SQL statements in essence to well do the same thing and then return the requested data for instance. So the type here would be the superhero and now the name of this property is usually just the pluralized name of the actual model and this then is the the name of the table that we will uh, well see then in the database in the end. So this is now our superheroes property, our DB set, and this is everything we need here in the data context for our code first migration. But we also have to register this thing in the program CS. So we can save this. And now in the program CS file, here we add again, builder services, and then add db context. And here we want to actually add our data context. Yeah, stop this. And of course, we add this uh, using directive and make this global maybe. All right. So we registered the db context. We also got it configured here. And now the next step is to use 
.NET EF, the .NET EF command. You can see it here already, .NET EF. We've got three commands, database, DB context, and migrations. The first thing we need is actually migrations to add a new code first migration. So .NET EF migrations add, and since this is the, this is the first one, typical way to call this is initial create because this would also create the database and you have to make sure to be in the project directory here. So CD for change directory. And now do this one more time. And we've got an error. All right, let's do that with .NET build. Five errors, okay. Maybe we can see them here as well. Energy framework core does not exist here. And that's interesting. Let's have a quick look. Well, actually it is here. Maybe we can rebuild the solution. Then have a look at the data context. There it is. Let's try the .NET build command one more time. Everything is okay. All right, build succeeded and we're done. And now we get a new folder, migrations. And in here, you see what is actually going on when we run this migration. In the up method, we create a table called superheroes with the ID, the name, first name, and so on. And already we set the primary key. The ID will be the primary key. And in the down method, we simply drop this table. This looks great. So now let's run this. And again, we can use .NET EF, but this time with a database and then update. And don't be confused here when the database does not exist. The update command will also create the database. So we run this and we should see all the commands. Yep, there they are. So we create a table superheroes, for instance, and so on. And now we can actually start the SQL manager, uh, SQL management, SQL server management studio. There it is. You connect. We see some databases. Yeah, Blazor e-commerce and .NET RPG. And now also the superhero database with these tables, EF migrations history, some internal stuff for entity framework, but also our superheroes. Isn't that nice with these columns and right click edit top 200 rows. And there are no heroes, of course, because we have to add some. So let's add Spider-Man again. Spider-Man, Peter Parker, New York City. And then let's change our superhero service. All right. So back to Visual Studio. And here's our superhero service. And now let's say we, we start with get all heroes. All right. But first, if you paid attention, we need a constructor to inject the data context again. So CTOR. And here now we say data context context. Again, we add this field at the underscore. If you haven't configured Visual Studio correctly or properly, but you don't need it. You can use the this keyword. It's totally up to you, of course. And in here now we say var heroes is a weight context superheroes and then to list async. All right. And here now we say return heroes. Perfect. And since I'm using an asynchronous function here now, we also have to change the return types. So now we're actually returning task list superhero. And oh, yeah, okay. This time that was that's correct. Okay, so that's that. And let's also change the interface. So here we are returning a task like that. And actually, well, let's let's just keep it for this little test here. And in the controller, 
we have to call uh, wait and now all the warnings or well, this warning in essence at least should be gone let's run this and then we'll see if we now get the heroes from the database all right okay i hope this is the the, the correct version try this out hit execute and we get spider-man that's correct and when you have a look here in our superhero service actually there are two heroes and maybe here now we can add another one batman again bruce wayne gotham city and we just execute this one more time and now we get Batman. Isn't that great? So no restart of the web API or anything. We just get the data from the database. This is nice. This is really, really nice. So now let's change the other methods. First, let's change the interface and maybe again, I'm just used to close the terminal and then the, yeah, now it stopped. All right. So of course, must have been me. I did something wrong. I don't know what, but something was not correct. So now I want to use asynchronous methods here. And uh, that should be it, I hope. We save this and we change it here as well. So now here we return tasks and these are then async methods okay so here as well async task superhero and here async task list superhero and here as well all right Okay, so get all heroes and now let's implement all the other ones. We want to get wait context superheroes find. And now here we can simply use the ID with the find async method because it's using the primary key. Finds an entity with the given primary key values, right? So find async ID. Now if the hero is null again, we just return null. That's that. And here we do actually the same stuff. So let's just copy this. Okay, what's up with the cursor now? It's funny. And here it's the request. No, not true. Still the ID. Great. And let's see. So here now in the update, this is important. We can do it like that. But then what we have to do is we have to save the changes, right? Because with that, we made a change to the object, but we have to tell Entity Framework that this should be actually written to the database. And we do it like that. We say await context, save context, context, save changes async all right so again we get the superhero from the database change the properties and then save changes async and this is what you have to do also when you add a hero to the database in essence to the database table and when you also remove one all right so we've got the get all covered get single is covered and update heroes covered and now delete similar stuff Our hero is this, and you know it is context superheroes, remove hero, and then again we say await context save changes async, all right, and here now we say context superheroes add and after that wait context save changes async 
All right, and these are the changes. Pretty simple, actually. And now again in the controller, we have to um, add the await keyword here at least. So here and here, here, and also here. And now, hopefully, Visual Studio is telling us no issues found. We save everything. So we've got no warning, no error whatsoever. Let's run this and make some tests. And then let's think about relationships in Entity Framework. Maybe we can add them too. So let's just test this first. Again, get superhero. We should get two, right? There they are, Spider-Man and Batman. Now let's get a single one. Try this out with ID2, for instance. Execute, we get Batman, one. We get Spider-Man and three. Hero not found. Great, this works just fine. Now let's add one. So we try this out. We actually don't need the ID because, well, the SQL Server is doing this for us. So Iron Man again. Tony Stark and then Malibu executes. And this is interesting. We get Spider Man and Iron Man. All right, let's have a look in the database. Okay, I th think I forgot something. Add hero, superhero service. Oh yeah, we return the superheroes. This is not correct. What we want to return is await context superheroes to list async, right? This is what I want to return. So let's uh, copy this. Because here, that's the same. No, nope, that's correct. But here, here we want to return them, and here as well. This is in the in the add method. So in the add method, the delete method, and also in the update method, we want to change that. And now we can actually remove this thing here. Yes, build and apply changes. Do we really have an error now? I saw an error here. Let's just restart the application. And let's see. Try this out one more time. Execute. One, two, and three. Great. Now let's try to delete Iron Man, for instance. So three, the execute. Gone. And the database also gone. Perfect. So now actually only updating is left. So put, try this out. And you know, I want to change Spider-Man. Let me get Spider-Man first. Yeah, that's the one. See that because I do not want to uh, override all the other properties. Don't need that. And this is now Oh, all right, Grammarly, it's spider, spider dash man. Okay. Now, amazing spider man. Execute. This looks great. And here as well. All right. And now maybe just the add one more time. Let's just use it with the default values. And we get ID four string, string, string and string great. And now regarding the relationships, meaning maybe we want to add the teams or the comics or whatever it is. So Spider-Man and Iron Man would be Marvel. Batman would be DC, for instance. I don't know what string is. Maybe you know. And for that, we would add another model and add another migration and so on. But I did this already in another video. So just click on the video you see here on the screen, and then you will learn the very next steps here.